Rub up your engines! Now here's something you don't see very many people talking about and that is if things do become electrified with cars there's going to be an awful lot of people that lose their jobs. Companies that make parts for gasoline cars. Gasoline cars have infinitely more parts than electric cars. Fuel injector rails, lots of parts will no longer be manufactured. Those companies will go out of business. Millions and millions of people are involved in automotive industry. Switches over to electric. A lot of jobs will be gone. Then they say, well, the new electric cars, they'll make more jobs. Ha ha. Most of the batteries are made in China. Probably most of the cars will end up being made in China. Don't think that it's going to help the United States and people with jobs. They always say, don't worry, we'll take care of your jobs. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. That's all I have to say. I've seen people when things were changed to companies and they say, don't worry, we'll find jobs for people. They found jobs for the upper management guys, but all the workers are like, go look for a job yourself. We really don't care. And what really makes me laugh is that this one guy, Bernie, not Bernie Sanders, Bernie Ricky, who's the president of the local union that builds trucks, says, and I quote, we know that President Biden understands that as we move forward, our workers will not be left behind. We know the president and Biden has our back. Boy, they live in La La Land. Guy has been backed his whole life by the banks of Delaware. Like he cares about common people, right? Talk about double speak here. They think just because they're union and union usually votes Democratic that the guy's going to be at their back. He didn't know what's going on. They're going to find jobs for people. You can't let the government run economies. When they do, it gets all screwed up. Graft and corruption in government, you just waste too much. The money that's spent on things that if a private sector did, it would be so much better set up. Thinking that the government's going to find jobs for these people. Oh, good luck on that one, you know? Anybody that thinks the government getting involved in this stuff is going to clear it all up, there's going to be a gigantic morass if they do start transferring over where jobs are coming from, where they're going. But what I worry about is, hey, all that stuff, most of the batteries and everything comes from China, right? The money's going over there. It's not going into American pockets. You can see that. That it's all great. Electric, hey, they're living in a fantasy world. They need to look at the whole picture, the overall picture, not just, oh, that pollutes less, and that's the end of the story. Some of them actually pollute more in the long run. So, I mean, hooking your wagon to one horse that isn't proven, in this case, electrification, maybe not such a smart idea. A lot of people lose their jobs. A lot of it goes overseas. You might be a little leery about with these supposed purveyors of the future that's going to be greater and better, as a lot of people are going to lose their jobs for something that isn't even proven yet. Mr. Luck says, I got a 2016 Kia Soul with oil loss. At the 50 to 60,000 mile mark, I started losing oil, and the dealership replaced the PCV valve under warranty. <laughs> I drove it a bit. After 4,000 miles, the oil light came on and hardly any oil came out when I changed it. They do have a warranty, but I only have 200 miles for this oil consumption warranty. What should I do? Well, take it in, but here's the thing. They always try to wheedle their way out of it. And I even had customers that had those engines where they had oil consumption and they supposedly fixed the engine. And less than a year later, the engines that they fixed blew up. This is why I tell you not to buy Kias. You may say you love your Kia, but you don't like this engine. Hey, the engine's the main part of your car. If you don't like the engine, you don't like the car. Their quality just isn't there. They keep saying, okay, it's great. They spent a lot of money advertising that. Their quality isn't there. You got an oil burner and the engine would have to be rebuilt. Maybe you can get them to rebuild it, but like I said, even if they do, it probably won't do it right. The guys at these places half the time, they don't spend much time building engines. They just replace parts and it costs too much money to rebuild an engine correctly. So these clowns, a lot of times, they'll just tag them apart, put new piston rings, hope they put it back together again and hope that it lasts. Subaru had the same problem with theirs with their six cylinder engine, the valve spring going bad. And a lot of times after they've replaced the valve springs and the engine broke a year later because they didn't put them back together, right? So my advice, stay away from these cars. Don't buy them. Take it in. See if they'll do something under warranty. If they do, great. But if not, if I were you, I'd get rid of the thing because eventually the engine's just going to blow if it's burning that kind of oil that you're almost completely out of oil after 4,000 miles. See what they'll do. If they don't do anything, I'd say just get rid of the thing. Prices are high now. Maybe you can get decent money for it and go get a good car like a Toyota or a Honda. Devin Ashland says, I got a 2006 Chevy. It's overheating. It was really in the accident, the front end was smashed in. Nobody got hurt. But now it's starting to overheat. There aren't any leaking fluids and the radiator is intact. What could be the issue? Lots of things can make a car overheat, but you were in an accident. 
Here's what I would check. Make sure that the cooling fans on the radiator are working. Maybe stuff got broken and the cooling fan doesn't work and it's going to overheat. That makes total common sense. And also look to see where it got smashed. He said the radiator's okay, but watch all the hoses and pieces that feed it. Maybe they're bent. And if they're bent, it won't flow correctly. That would make total sense too. But more often, it's the cooling fan isn't working right. You got in a wreck and it's not working right. And that's why it's going to overheat. Now, here's how you can tell that real easy. If it overheats when you're in town, stop and go and idling, but it doesn't on the highway, the cooling fan's not working. Because when you're going on a highway 65, you got 65 mile an hour wind blowing through the radiator. You don't need fans. So if it doesn't do it on a highway, got to be your cooling fans aren't working. Well, Volvo, a company known for safety, when they made a bunch of safety stuff decades ago, they gave it to the world free. Well, it turns out their cars aren't as safe as you might think. They just recalled another 195,000 Volvos because of defective airbags. These are 2001 and 2007 Volvos. One person has died. The airbag blew up in shrapnels and killed the driver. They've already recalled more than half a million. And that's a lot for Volvo because they're not that large of a manufacturer. Now there's more on the list. If you're worried, go to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration website and see if yours is included. Now, this is interesting because this is not a Takata airbag. These inflators and airbags were made by ZF and TRW. These are not Takata ones. These are other ones. Nobody seems to be making them right. So it might be a good idea to check to see if yours is in it. Be kind of cautious. You don't want your head to be ripped apart by an airbag that goes off. WPF guy says, why am I getting four miles per gallon after I swap my mass airflow sensor? I was getting 10 miles a gallon in a Ford van. I usually got 15. I changed the mass airflow sensor and it popped to 16.3, but then it went back to 12 after one tank of fuel. What could be wrong? You did go up to 16.3, but then it went back down to 12. You didn't do anything else, right? All you did was change that mass air flow sensor. It went up and then it went down. I would assume you got a bad mass air flow sensor. On those things, believe me, I've been working on cars for 53 years. Do not buy cheap aftermarket made in Chinese ones. They don't hold up over time. Those things are so complex. They got to measure how many grams of air come in. Some of them also measure the ambient temperature of the air. Unless you you go with original equipment new and not remanufactured you're going to have problems that's just how those things are i would not use remanufactured ones i would not use aftermarket ones i would only use oem ones first get an oem one put it in there's too many possibility of problems with your sensor because it was good and then it was bad but you didn't do anything so the only thing it would be that the, the mass airflow sensor worked for a very short period of time and it already started to degrade and i see that all the time with the cheap chinese parts and also with remanufactured ones that they say they remanufactured sometimes they spray Spray paint them. That's their idea of remanufacturing. So you got to go original equipment on mass airflow sensors for any car. That's the only way you can do it unless you just like gambling because there's two many possibilities of computer failure with those aftermarket ones. So I've even seen people plug them in and they destroy the computer because they short circuit to the driver circuit and then they don't drive at all. So go to OEM. Jetty Nikon says, I'm buying a new jack. I got a 2020 Toyota Camry. I think I'm getting a floor jack and stands. What weight should the jack be tested for? Two ton is fine. I mean, three tons even better, but two tons are fine for that. I go to Harbor Freight and buy my jacks. I got one of their Daytonas. It was one of their more expensive ones. It was like 200 something bucks. It's a really good jack. But even their hundred something dollar jacks. If it's a two ton jack, that's plenty enough. And just make sure you get jack stands that are steel. Don't get the aluminum ones. They're crap. Get solid steel ones. You'll be totally safe. That's plenty enough. And their jacks are fine. You know, they're made in China, but they're all made in China. I have some Harbor Freight jacks that are 20 years old and they're still working. You know, that's good enough. You don't need to go buy a really expensive $800 jack. Those are perfectly good. They're just hydraulic pistons that go up and down. And the Chinese know how to make steel. They make very good steel products. And the jacks are all made out of steel. So two ton is enough. If you want to be a fanatic, get a three ton. I got a three ton, but I work on trucks and stuff too, so I need more weight. But a two ton one is perfectly fine. Now, here's an interesting one from a viewer. He's retired and he says, I do mostly local driving. I got 28,000 miles in my Honda and it won't pass Pennsylvania inspection due to the passenger rocker panel rusting. I had an accident, ran over a curb, and it's a little cosmetic. One auto body place said, Get another car, don't fix it. Another guy said, It's 2300. Another guy says, I'll do it for 1600. I can do it without taking the doors off. I'm retired and I'm on fixed income. What do you think? I don't know what's going on there in Pennsylvania. But when I was a kid, we used to cut them off and weld it on, take a few hours, you know. If you can find a guy who works on the weekends and his garage or something does welding, have him put them on, you know. 
It's not that hard of a job. You don't take the doors off. You can cut them off and weld stuff on it. The original cars didn't even have rocker panels on them, you know. But the guys are trying to rip you off saying how much it costs to fix that. It's not that hard to weld something on there and do it. Even $1,600 is highway robbery when it comes down to it. Find some guy who does stuff at night. Some guy who does welding. You can get rocker panels aftermarket from China for probably 50 bucks or something and have the guy weld it on and paint them. I suppose, does the paint have to match too, you know? Maybe you could just leave it primer, right? Will they not inspect it then? I don't know. People in Pennsylvania have lost their minds. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.